Hi, I'm Allison for Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. And today, as part of the equipment series, we're gonna dive a little deeper into a specific breed. Today's breed is the Nova Scotia Duck Tolling Retriever. And one of the things that we wanted to do is we kind of wanted to give you like a quick start or a start here guide on how you would go about grooming your duck toller um, for the show ring at home, whatever it may be. So we've started doing this with a few breeds. Um, we're doing it kind of the breeds that we have the most requests for. So if there is a breed out there that you would like to see done, hey, you can leave it in the comments below. You can get a hold of us through email, whatever it is. And we would just love to add your breed to our list. Um, as I go through today's guide, you don't need to stop the video and write down what I'm telling you or any of the product recommendations or anything because below me, there is going to be a link that will take you to Leading Edge Dog Show Academy and there'll be a downloadable list that you can have there that has everything that I talk about today. So we're just doing that to make your life a little bit easier. So let's get to it. So I have my Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever and I want to give it a bath and I want it to look beautiful because I'm gonna compete at a dog show. Where do I start? Um, where I'm gonna start, I'm gonna have my dog on the grooming table and I'm going to have a coat king type rake. I prefer a coarse rake over a fine or a medium. A lot of people get confused by this, but it, it takes out the bulk of the hair, like that kind of undercoaty type hair. Um, without really damaging the coat where the fine one just doesn't really do that job, right? So I'm gonna look at my toller and I'm gonna decide, is there anywhere it's big and bushy? Is it a young dog that has a big bushy butt, has too much butt hair? Always be careful that you can take too much hair out of the top line, especially right behind the withers and kind of get an undesirable dip there. So really you're just kind of using this all over your dog, uh, wherever you think they have a little bit of excess coat. I do like to do this before the bath in case it creates kind of any dander and then that way I can wash it away, right? Now you could have a toller that has a tighter fitting coat and you might look at it and think, oh, where do I use the Coat King Rake on this? Well, the answer is you don't, right? If you have one of those ones, most likely a female um, that has that tighter fitting coat, hallelujah, step saved, right? So now I'm going to pop my dog into the tub and uh, I like to start with Clean Start. So I like to start with Clean Start because it's a clarifying shampoo. So whether it's Chris Christensen Clean Start or any other kind of clarifying shampoo, I'm happy for you to use that. And you're doing this to allow you to start with a blank slate or as I like to say, a clean start. Pay attention to like around the ears, um, around the sanitary area to make sure you're getting rid of all that grease and grime. And you're doing this to remove that grease and grime, environmental buildup, buildup of maybe other shampoos and conditioners or styling products so that what I'm about to tell you has a better chance of working. So for my duck tollers, I generally like to use Spectrum One shampoo and conditioner. So this is like a rough coat shampoo and conditioner, whatever one that would work for that coat type that you have access to, that's fantastic. Um, I am going to use a shampoo, maybe diluted about eight to one. I'm gonna use it all over that entire dog. I'm gonna leave it on three to five minutes just to give it enough time to actually do the job that it's supposed to do there. I am going to follow up with a the, the conditioner. Now, if my dog has that thick kind of unruly wavy coat, I'm gonna use conditioner all over the entire body, but paying special attention to the pants, the bib and the tail furnishings. Um, if my dog has that flatter coat, I might forego the conditioner on the body and I might just use the conditioner on the furnishings, chest hair, back of the front legs, belly, pants, and the tail furnishings, right? So that's one way to go. If my dog has that really thin coat, I might, instead of the Spectrum One or Rough Coat, I might use a thickening shampoo and conditioner, such as Chris Christensen Thick and Thicker, that tends to work really well on that coat type. As well, uh, there also are some color enhancing shampoos out there like Red on Red. If your duck toller has a little bit of um, sun damage or just kind of a paler color for whatever reason, you could use the Red on Red in place of your red, the Spectrum One shampoo and conditioner, or the, sorry, the Spectrum One shampoo or the Thick and Thicker shampoo. There's no need to really use three shampoos. You don't need to use Clean Start, the Red on Red, and the other desired shampoo. Um, you know, that's just kind of a lot of washing. 
I really do recommend if you are using a color enhancing shampoo such as Red on Red, that you really do use the clean start because you really do need to make sure that you have um, a clean base without buildup for that Red on Red to work. I also really recommend that you leave it on for five to 10 minutes so it really does have a chance to enhance that color. Um, I also suggest if you have time that you do a strand test, like maybe on the non-show side, just to make sure it's um, the color, a shade that you like, right? So kind of all those things at once. So my dog's still in the tub. I just finished with the conditioner. The conditioner's been on there for about th five minutes, three to five minutes. Now I'm just gonna rinse it out 100%. Uh, we have tons and tons of content, eat both on our YouTube channel and in Leading Edge Dog Show Academy about systematic and stylized drying. I invite you to head on over there and look at that if you're kind of not sure what I'm talking about, right? So now I have my dog toweled off. They're on their table with two clean dry towels and I am going to use my force dryer on them, my high velocity dryer, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm going to get that dog about 80% dry. Um, you know, So for the first maybe 50% of that process, I'm not really paying attention to what's happening. I'm just kind of like getting the bulk of the water out. For the last um, bit of that drying process, I'm kind of paying attention, right? Where do I want the hair to lay down? I dry the hair down where I want it to be up, like maybe on the legs, I'm drying the hair up right? Um, you know, protecting your dog's ears with a happy hoodie. I'm happy for you to do that as well. So about the 80% dry mark is when I'm going to add in some styling products. Now, I don't like to add in styling products before this point because I feel before they're 80% dry, really you're over diluting those styling products when you're applying them to a dog that's really wet, right? So they're not really going to do the job. So about 80% dry tends to be my sweet spot. So for a dog that kind of just needs all over body, I'm going to use some bottoms up or some kind of bodifying spray, um, something that you probably have to dilute yourself, put in with a spray bottle. To me, that's a really good one. Or the thick and thicker leave-in treatment. This is also a good one at that 80% dry mark, right? Uh, then I'm going to switch to my hot dryer. So you can't get any dog dried properly without a hot dryer, 100%. A hot dryer is not your velocity dryer that gets warm. It is a separate dryer with a heating element. It can be a stand dryer. It can be the dryer that you use yourself on your own hair, right? It has to have a heating element in it. At that point, I'm going to start styling my dog dry. You really need to pay attention to get the results at this point. The tools I'm using at this point um, I like a slicker. This happens to be the carbon. It has that nice soft 17 millimeter pin. This is a small carbon. I just think that works really great for a toller. A pin brush. Remember all pin brushes have that straight pin. I like something with a medium length, about a 27 millimeter pin is usually good for me. Either this oval style, I find oval is great for kind of all over grooming. Oblong, great for styling. Sometimes those tollers need extra styling on their top line. I also like some kind of like flat bristle brush. This is the purple nylon ionic, um, but any kind of flat bristle brush is great for getting that top coat nice and flat. So these are the brushes I'm using as I'm doing that hot stylized dry, right? So I'm probably using my pin brush in the beginning on the top line to style any areas. Maybe there's a little dip behind the withers, right? But for the rest of the top line, I like to use my flat bristle brush and I'm like actually pressing pretty hard while I'm drying to get that top coat to lay nice and, and flat. Um, I'm gonna use my pin brush on the tail furnishings, the chest coat, the back of the leg hair, the, the chest hair, the underline, and the tail featherings, as well as the pants. I'm probably gonna use my slicker kind of everywhere else, right? So the rest of the body, down the sides of the neck, the ears, behind the ears, all the legs, the legs need to come straight up, right? While you're doing that hot dry. And I find like this is like just the best way to go about it. If you have a dog that needs like a little bit more body in their coat, as you're using the hot dryer, don't be afraid to add in your bottoms up or your thick and thicker leave in and kind of back dry it. So dry it backwards with your slicker to just kind of get that extra body, right? So now we're kind of done, right? So we're dried, you know, we have our dog 100% dry. If you're not sure that your dog's dry, dry it for another five minutes. That's always my recommendation. So now we want to stand back and kind of look at the overall picture of our dog. At this point, we're combing and making sure everything's landing in the right place. 
Maybe I'm using my bottoms up as like kind of my combing and styling spray at this point. And I like, you know, a poodle comb, like a 004 poodle comb, nice long comb with wider tines. You could also use the competition comb. Um, this is also great for new groomers. Um, it has like a coarser side and a finer side. Either one is, but I'm looking at the overall picture and combing that hair into place, maybe re-wetting any areas that need to be re-wet and, you know, styling them the proper way. Um, at this point, I'm trimming the feet, you know, doing some overall neat and tidy trimming. We don't like a duct holder to look over trimmed, right? So we're gonna use a straight shear um, on the feet. I like a shorter straight shear for my feet. We're gonna do the bottoms of the feet, the outline of the feet. Uh, we kind of leave the whiskers on our duct holders. Although I kind of like to just take out the ugly ones. So if they have a really fat whisker or one that's just like poking the wrong way, I leave the whiskers, but just kind of take out the ones that look not appealing. That's kind of my tip about whiskers for that breed. And then, um, you know, my thinning shears for the top of the feet, around the ears, and just kind of like tidy up that underline. You don't want that nice hard line that you see on some setters or some of our, you know, um, poodle type breeds, right? You want a nice soft underline. So what I'm meaning is, you know, if they have some scraggly hairs at their belly, just kind of, you know, trim those in to match. Same with the, you know, underneath the tail, you kind of want to make a little separation between the tail and the back of the dog and just kind of generally tidy it up all over. So then um, you might want to back brush the legs, brush them up, put a little bit of cholesterol in them and a little bit of leave-in treatment, dry that up to make the legs look like they have more body. You could put a little bit of white chalk on their toes to emphasize the white on their toes. If you wanted a little bit of white makeup, um, you know, on any little white spots they have on their face, maybe you want to use some red chalk to touch up any areas that, that maybe just need to blend in a little bit better, look a little bit redder, where maybe, you know, they have a little scar or just a little blemish from whatever it is. Red chalk, super useful. Then kind of my last tip is thick and thicker, aerosol spray. So this is a great spray because it does provide hold. It gives a little bit of texture to the coat. Um, if you did have to dry out a cow lick out of the butt or any, you know, down the back of the neck and you spray it with some thick and thicker and really dry it in and respray it, it kind of makes that styling that you did last a little bit longer. So I like that. It's also combable, which is great. It also doesn't feel sticky and gross like regular hairspray, which no judge or a real person actually wants to feel on a toller. Um, so here, yeah, looking at everything I got, I think I kind of covered the basics of like your quick start guide for getting your toller from, hey, how do I get it in the ring to like, you know, at least understanding the steps that it might take. Um, I would be happy for you to head on over to Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. Check out our course on like double coated breeds. That would really help you. Like there's lots of interesting information in there for you. Um, there's some stuff in our Golden Retriever course that would also kind of transfer over to your duck toller and just stay tuned for hopefully a full course on Nova Scotia duck tolling retrievers, hopefully coming to you one day soon. Um, so yeah, from all of us at Leading Edge Dog Show Academy to all of you out there, I hope that this helped. Hey everyone, thanks for watching today's video. Please leave us a comment below, let us know what you thought, and as well, if you have any ideas for future content that you'd like to see, you can put them down there as well. You can head over to leadingedgedogshowacademy.com where you can find our free, premium, and subscription content, and we'd love to have you join us there. As well, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on those notifications, that way you never miss another free video tutorial. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.